Hello, my beauty lovers. Um, my name is Rosa Leon, and today we are talking microdermabrasion. So you actually have wrote to me a lot, or a lot of you have wrote to me and said, "Hey, give another video for microdermabrasion. Give us." more information so apparently microdermabrasion is a hot topic and today i decided to talk more about microdermabrasion i do have a couple of videos on my channel so you can always um scroll down and see um and i actually will put a link um up for you so you can um, watch other videos on microdermabrasion if you haven't seen them yet but today i wanted to talk i guess continue talking about microdermabrasion um Again, my name is Rosa Leon. I am a licensed esthetician in the state of New York. I am also a licensed beauty instructor in the state of New York, as well as the business owner and just the beauty lover, just like you all are. So let's talk microderm. <laughs> okay, so before we get into who is the best candidate for microderm abrasion, let's talk about the actual microderm abrasion as a procedure and what it is for. Um, microderm abrasion is considered to be a mechanical exfoliation so it's an advanced form of an exfoliation using um, aluminum aluminum oxide crystals using um, natural or organic crystals that are usually made from a nutshell um, as well as using um, diamond tip um microderm abrasion so these are the diamond tips and this is the microderm abrasion that i'm going to be talking about today so um all three are considered to be a part of microderm abrasion that would be again aluminum oxide crystals uh, natural or organic crystals made from a nutshell as well as a diamond tips okay so all of those are part of microderm abrasion but um I like to use diamond tip microderm abrasion, so I'll mostly uh, be talking about um, that type of microderm abrasion. And then if you guys have questions about the other one um, that is using um, aluminum oxide crystals and organic crystals, I can always answer your questions. So who can benefit from microderm abrasion the most? Of course, number one is congested skin. Okay, so anybody who has um, thicker skin with large pores, um, congested pores, uh, blackheads, some pimples, small pimples maybe, uh, but mostly congested skin is definitely um, a, a, the skin for microderm abrasion. Additionally, uh, someone who has an uneven texture. So you know how sometimes you touch your skin or especially around the nose uh, in a t-zone your forehead and it feels very rough so if your skin is not sensitive but the texture is definitely uneven and rough then you are also a candidate for microderm abrasion um, sometimes we are dealing with sunspots we are dealing with fine lines um, we have some um, maybe um, um, uneven tone in different uh, in different parts of our face that skin is also a great candidate for microderm abrasion so anything that you will that you experience as far as uh, congestion uneven rough um, texture on the skin all of those are pluses for microderm abrasion um, but what's important is uh, of course contraindications and what skin is not a good candidate or where microderm abrasion is actually a contraindication and we cannot use it so let's talk about that so a lot of times we may go through problems like uneven texture like congestion and all of that but on the other hand our skin is sensitive so sensitivity usually is a contraindication. In that case, if you do have sensitive skin, I would not just play with microderm abrasion without a recommendation or a prescription of a medical practitioner or a licensed esthetician 
um, and just you know because there are a lot of home devices out there with my kitchen vibration diamond tip and you know I love gadgets so those are great but you have to make sure that you are a candidate for microdermabrasion. That's very, very important because microdermabrasion can actually damage your skin because it does use abrasive um, crystals or abrasive uh, tips. And of course that is done or created for a purpose. But if you do have thin skin, sensitive skin, broken capillaries, uh, then it can actually do more damage than than benefit your skin so make sure that if you feel like your skin is compromised then what I suggest is first um, go and get a consultation or skin analysis uh, with the licensed practitioner and make sure that microdermabrasion is the procedure for you so let's just go over Again, the, the type of skin that I would not do microdermabrasion on would definitely be um, sensitivity or sensitive skin, um, rosacea, um, thin skin, um, acne. So if we have a full-blown acne um, phase, microdermabrasion is not for you. There are other alternatives to treat that type of skin. But if you already ha don't have um, any breakouts, no acne, but you do have scars and pigmentation um, post acne, then microdermabrasion is most likely for you, unless your skin is still very sensitive. So, um, and uh, probably, you know, during the video, I may remember some other uh, types of skin or conditions where microdermabrasion would not be the best option. But for now, those are the main ones. Now, I wanted to touch on the actual machines, uh, microdermabrasion machines. Like I said, I mostly use diamond um, tip microdermabrasion, and there are a lot of them on the market. Um, a lot of microdermabrasion machines are sold on Amazon, eBay, um, oh, Walmart, I mean, you name it they are out there we're pretty much flooded with a type of microdermabrasion machines and a lot of them are are decent you know some of them are really good and um uh, actually my machine that i use i use three different ones in my spa and one of them is um uh, that i'm using i'm going to be sharing with you of course and i'll list others um in the um in the description down below but um, today I'm using a microdermabrasion machine um, that's called Diamond Skin Peel and I'll show it to you in a minute. But what I'm trying to say is that there are a lot of different machines out there, different brands. They all use pretty much the same component and those would be um, a suction and um, the tips. So the diamond tips, and they usually come in a box like this, okay, where you will have the little um, handles and, oh, let me see, little handles and the actual um, tips, and I'll show you how to pick them. Oh, I that part. Okay, so this is what you would usually get with your microdermabrasion machine. So all of your tips are here, you know, your filters are, um, in, in your kit and a couple of um, extra handles and it gives you a slight description of what um, you would use those tips for uh, so this is pretty good you know um, it makes sense it's simple and they pretty much come with all all the machines uh, you will get um, a box with tips what I do is I always get an additional box because they do um they do kind of run off they get um uh they get flat after a while so i would definitely get an extra box of uh, tips and that will be you'll be set for for a while okay you also um want to probably see my machine so i'm gonna be turning my camera around all right guys so this is my microdermabrasion machine um i love it i got it on amazon i'll give you the link to it 
so um, it's it works fine the only thing about it is that it's uh, the motor is a little bit loud louder I um, worked with other machines that are not as loud um, so that's the only thing about it but other than that um, it's it's a good machine it's simple to understand it's simple to um, manage and uh, I love it so it has a handle to it you know with with the cord um, the hand piece and you know it gets a little holder here so I have a holder for it and also it has the power button so here I'm gonna turn it on so you can hear how loud it is you know so I usually just have to tell my my clients because they're relaxed I tell them that the machine is a little bit louder but I like that it has a very strong motor and it's a good machine so that's the only maybe negative thing about it um, it also has the intensity and the intensity is for uh, vacuum so because it doesn't have doesn't use crystals um, it only has the um, um, the intensity control uh, but the intensity control is only for vacuum in the machines that have uh, that use um, uh, Crystals there you'll see two type of controls. You'll see one that is uh, Controlling the amount of crystals that are shooting out of the machine and another control is just like this that controls um, Vacuum or suction of it so real quick i'm going to show you when i use the machine i actually would turn it on let's see i'm going to turn it on i'm going to grab my my hand piece i'm going to put a um one of my tips you know one of my tips that i'm using for my client and we'll talk about it in a minute too what is the proper tip to use so i'm going to put the um uh, filter then my tip and then I'm going to close the hole and you see how um, the suction raises so there I would adjust while I'm closing the hole the hole should be closed like so the opening should be closed and there I will adjust the suction so I'll tell you as far as what number it should be on when you're working on the client's face or in your own face um, so you're not you know causing any bruising all right so I'm gonna turn the machine off and switch the camera to myself okay so let's dive into the actual diamond tips okay I actually have a lot of them here and I am buying more because you know they wear out so we need to use um, fresh ones you you want to have some good abrasion on on your diamond tips so diamond tips come um, in about five different types and it's actually on the box here so it tells you exactly what to use them for but I'm gonna share my opinion just you know from my my practice my experience um, doing my kitchen abrasion so the first types of uh, tip is that large large tip I'm going to show it to you it's usually used on the body uh, so there are about one two three different sizes like I'm gonna to try to show it to you you see how this one is the largest then you have a smaller one here then these are even smaller but they're still too big for uh, you see how big is the opening it's too big for the face so i would use them sometimes um you know some people have large faces or a large forehead you could use it on on their um forehead but for the most part this would be your body microdermal abrasion like the back or the chest okay so the large ones with the big opening would be for the body all right now the next type of um uh tip would be this one all right so this is what I use the most on the face and you know one of them let's just say see this is one of them 
okay now if you notice all of your tips have the number so let me just tell you so you have an idea now I just look at the um, at the tip at the uh, abrasion of it and I just know if that's the one that I need to know that I need to use now you in the beginning can go by the number every machine or every brand has their own numbering but in general what you want to know is that the larger the number so as the numbers go up uh, that means that there is less abrasion or the crystals are smaller so it almost looks like it has um, um, the tip is full of little diamond uh, chips okay uh, some of them look like almost like a diamond powder so you'll you will see just by looking at the um, diamond um, covering you will see how small if you if you feel like you are not sure just look at the number and usually if the number is larger than the previous one it means that the abrasion of it is smaller so it's less abrasive so smaller the smaller the number the more um, abrasion there is okay so that means the chips the diamond chips are larger so they're gonna abrase the skin more so obviously you use it accordingly there okay and then you have um, the tips with a very small opening let me see if I have a couple of them yeah they're usually two types it's hard to see in the video but one is usually a little bit larger than the other one and they are designed for um, to use on on the small areas like you know about the lip or around the nose uh, or on the actual nose um, so these little ones or around the eyes as well so these are the ones that you would use um, in the small areas all right okay and the same thing they usually put about two in your in your box of tips so they are um, the smallest one has the least amount of um, abrasion or or it has a really really fine diamond powder okay so what happens is that um, just understand this that the smaller the opening is the more suction you want to have okay so around the nose I usually double up the amount of suction that I use for you know the entire face because the opening is very small and you want it to kind of grab the skin you want it to grab the skin and slough off the dead the dead cells so you want um, to raise up the intensity of the suction on the um, tip that has a very small opening for the small areas okay so these are the tips I may remember some other information about it um, so how do you choose the tip uh, the proper tip uh, you would actually evaluate the skin whether it's your own skin or the skin of your client and there you will decide you know what tips to use um, another question that I'm always being asked is how many tips do you use during microdermabrasion? And I love that question because I know that a lot of estheticians just use one tip for the whole face, and I think that's incorrect. Sometimes I use five to six tips. Um, sometimes I use up the whole box of my small um, tips because there's so much dead skin on the face. So don't be afraid to change your tips you know sometimes you even have to change the filter because it fills up um, during microdermabrasion uh, procedure so forehead can use one tip you know one side can use another tip under the eyes or around the eyes could be a different tip chin can use a new tip so don't be afraid to um, change change up your tips okay and the filter as well all right um, so let's now talk about my model skin 
All right, so before I evaluate my client's skin, I will go ahead and do a quick cleanse of her skin. Um, she did have a little bit of makeup on. So just to kind of go over um, the cleansers that you can use during um, prior to microdermabrasion. Uh, if somebody is wearing makeup, then of course uh, you would want to use a makeup remover, but you definitely want to make sure that the skin is thoroughly cleansed before uh, performing microdermabrasion. I'm using um, a little bit of gentle foaming cleanser that is also designed to be a makeup remover. So it's kind of two in one. But if you don't have um, a cleanser that's both, then definitely do your makeup remover first and then your treatment cleanser. Like usually it's a foaming, gentle foaming cleanser. Um, if you also see that your client's skin has a lot of buildup of dead skin, you may use um, a light scrub before you do microdermabrasion. And the purpose of it, just so you can um, strip that first dead layer. So with microdermabrasion, you can go a little deeper. So again, it's okay to use makeup remover, foaming cleanser. Um, sometimes, depending on the skin, I can even use a cleanser with um, a low percentage glycolic or any acid in it. You can do that, but it all depends on your client's skin and um, condition. So I will go ahead and wash it off. I'm using disposable sponges. I love them. They're very soft. I will also list them down below in my comments. So make sure that your skin is very clean before you start evaluating it to determine what, if microdermabrasion is an appropriate treatment for your client and how you go into microderm your client's skin. All right. Okay. So I'm gonna take a closer look at my client's skin. Um, I will use my magnifying lamp for it. And what I'm noticing is that my client definitely has some congestion on her forehead. So the texture is a little bit rough. And I even see some, you know, a blackheads on her forehead. Then I am going to turn her face just so I can see the sides. She has pretty good skin. It's not thin, it's not too thick, um, it's normal. It's kind of, you know, your combination skin, oily to normal. Um, she exfoliates regularly, so she doesn't have a lot of buildup of dead skin, but she does have undersurface congestion throughout her, her face. Um, definitely clogged pores on her nose then on the other side um i am you know stretching a little bit just to kind of see if there is congestion on this side so it's pretty consistent throughout her whole um face chin is slightly congested so she does have poor congestion um and very lightly she has um a little bit of buildup of dead skin so she's a good candidate because of the congestion. She's not sensitive per se. Um, I mean, I've done her facials before, so I just know that sometimes her skin can 
slightly react to things if I'm using, let's say, acids or I'm being too rough with my extractions or anything. So her skin can definitely, um, you know, get red on me. But that's to be expected. That's pretty normal. So I am slightly cautious with her skin, but she's actually a pretty good candidate. We've done microdermabrasions on her before and, you know, her skin showed very good results. Um, so this is your one of the types of the skin that um, is a good candidate for microdermabrasion. Young skin, but sen slightly sensitive, slightly, very slightly sensitive. Um, and uh, normal to oily, not thin, congested, with some buildup of dead skin. So you notice how I am uh, mentioning two things. There is congestion <clears throat> that is under surface, um, uh, of, uh, follicular congestion, and there is also a buildup of dead skin. So we want to um, kind of take that into consideration that some people just have a collection of dead skin but they don't necessarily have congestion in the pores and vice versa so in either case those two types would be um, a good candidate for microdermabrasion um, treatment because of the suction part of it it will actually pull the congestion up to the surface of the skin and it can actually help you with extractions if you want to do a microdermabrasion before you do extractions um, or um, if there's not a lot of congestion you can do a microdermabrasion after extractions so i always say that it's okay to do light extractions when you are performing microdermabrasion and then you are the judge of as far as whether you do your microdermabrasion before your extractions or after it all depends on the skin um, type and, and what's going on with the skin all right so uh, we just determined that our client is a good candidate for microdermabrasion and um, we're gonna go ahead and start so make sure that your client's skin is dry okay sometimes i know that some estheticians will actually take an alcohol pad and run it through the skin you can do that i don't do that i just make sure that my skin is very clean and um, if need to be i'll just run a tissue through it just to make sure that the skin is um, dry so for microdermabrasion um, you need to make sure that your skin is dry. It's not moist. Now, um, let's go ahead and start the treatment. Okay, so um, when I start the treatment, of course, the first thing I'm going to do is pick my first uh, tip that I'm going to use. So my client has a very rough forehead. So I think I'm going to go ahead and pick the tip that has um, a, a, a rougher um, covering. Okay, so that would be, I think, um, 110, 150 as far as the number goes. So I'm going to pick that. Um, I'm going to pick my tip. Yep, this would be good. The first thing you want to do is you want to put the filter on. Okay, so you see how I just put the fill. You can go ahead and turn the machine on or not. And then right over your tip, go ahead and screw on tightly. Screw on your tip. So this is what it should look like. All right, so let's turn on the machine. Okay, so after I have my tip and my filter, all right, the next thing I want to do is um, set the, the intensity, uh, vacuum int or suction intensity. All right, for that, I'm going to close the opening and I'm going to look at my machine and actually let me show it to you too. Okay, so right here, I have it at 20. Okay, but remember, you do have to close the hole the opening on your handpiece 
in order to see the number go up. So 20 is what I use on this particular machine um, to go over the face, the entire face, um, unless I'm working on a nose. Then in, on my nose, you'll see, and I'll show it to you, I'm going to raise it up. You also adjust your, um, uh, your control, your vacuum, while the see while the opening is closed by your finger okay so i'm going to go ahead and move it up to 40. so when i'm on the nose i'm at around 40 or maximum 50 if i'm if i'm working on a really really thick skin so here like for my model i'm going to be using i'm going to be on 40 when I'm working on her nose, okay? But that's later. For now, I'm dropping it to, to 20. Okay, so 20, 22, 21 is fine. So somewhere around 20, okay? All right, so coming back, I like to just wrap it around, wrap the cord around only because I don't like when my uh, machines touch the client's skin, you know, um, just because, uh, you know, cross-contamination. I don't want my cords to touch um, client's body. And I'm sure nobody wants to feel um, anything on your naked skin while you're trying to relax or get a facial. All right, so what I do is I just wrap it around my arm like that. Um, actually, I'm going to throw my, my glasses on so I can see better. All right, so now I look all smart. Okay, so the very important thing is when you're doing microdermabrasion, you want to hold the skin taut, okay? I usually start right on the forehead. It's a less sensitive area. It's a very bony area, so this is a good area to test um, if the suction is appropriate. So I'm going to pull the skin. This hand always follows your working hand. And I'm going to pull. If I feel like I'm still tagging the skin, then I'm going to also add another pull against, you know, against my strokes. So I'm going to start and do a couple of strokes after that, I want to ask my model if this um, setting is comfortable for her. Are you okay? Is this comfortable? Okay. So make sure that it is comfortable. And I actually want to show it to you closer, just so you can see how her skin already started to um, peel from microdermabrasion. So we're gonna go a little closer yeah, as close as we possibly can. So her skin. So I'm doing long strokes. Always holding against, against the pull of the handpiece. Okay, and if you can see, she already started to peel and that's great. Like I told you, she was definitely a good candidate for microdermabrasion. So what I'm trying to do here is I want to do a long stroke or a medium long stroke. And then when you're ready to lift it off the skin, you just kind of glide it up like that. So just like that. Okay, so just monitor me how I'm holding the skin. So pay attention to that. So I'm holding the skin and I'm moving my handpiece one direction first. And then, so that was vertical. And now I'm going horizontal. You can overlap your strokes about 25% overlapping. Okay, so medium to long strokes making sure that you follow the uh, this hand always follows the hand piece stretching the skin the opposite direction 
okay so this is how you would do the forehead now I'm going this way I am right-handed so I'm working with my right hand and you see how I'm changing up my hands to get some smooth strokes for myself yeah her skin is definitely peeling really really nicely and um, if you can see you see how I already got a good amount of dead skin so I'm almost ready to change this tip okay I'm going to turn her head a little bit turn my client's head and now I'm on the side of her face gently I'm also going to be pulling the skin against against the um, strokes and moving all the way down you can see that her skin starts to peel immediately I love it okay I'm not going too close to the eye I'm actually putting my fingers there to protect the eye area because there I will go separately because I need more control there um, around the eye is a very very sensitive area that's where we tend to bruise our clients or scratch them so here you can only every time you start a new area you can ask your client if they are if they're comfortable are you okay are you comfortable like that no so I did a few strokes like one pass down now I can go up so I'm constantly checking my tips just to make sure that it's now not too um, congested because at some point when there's a lot of dead skin uh, in between um, the uh, diamond powder then you're not really getting a lot of abrasion so you definitely want to change the tip at some point so I feel like now is the time so I'm gonna have I'm gonna go ahead and quickly lift unscrew and change my tip I don't know I'm gonna try to show you if you can see um, how much skin I already got just from that little area of her face so her skin is doing very very well with microdermal abrasion okay so this um, filter is still good for me to use one more tip so I'm gonna go ahead and throw my next tip the number of this tip is 180 so it's slightly less abrasive than the other one um, you know that's okay it's still abrasive enough and if it's not then I'm gonna pick another one and just put um, the one that's more abrasive so I'm just gonna turn your head one more time and this time I'm going up now remember your strokes don't have to be long if they're short it's okay as long as you control them very important strokes should be controlled you don't want to bruise anyone you can go slower just to be more in control that's totally fine or you know I'm a little more experienced so I can go a little faster but I almost feel like the the slower you are the more abrasion you get so that's that's our goal we want to slough off that skin so now I can go inward or 
I can go outward. For you to do right around the lips, I would ask your client to pull your lips in for me. Yeah. So they're going to pull their lips in and this way, make sure you can see it. This way you can actually do, it stretches the skin for you because you know how sometimes here we always get a lot of buildup of skin and um, oil. So it's good when your client pulls their lips in and it stretches the skin for us so we can microderm right around the lips. I'm going to do your upper lip. All right. So always, this hand is always helping. It's always around. Now, if you feel like, you know, the skin is not sensitive, but it's um it has some broken capillaries around the nose just avoid that area if you don't feel comfortable um, applying suction in that area because uh, you see that she already has um, compromised skin around the nose and, or some redness or broken capillaries then definitely avoid that area but other than that around the nose is where we get a lot of uh, buildup congestion dead skin um, our clients sometimes don't clean very well around this area so microderm if there's no contraindications microderm should definitely go in that area um, if, you know and with a few passes now if you want you could use this tip on the nose I like to be a little slower just to get the dead skin and all that congestion from the nose. And then if I, as I'm going and doing my passes, if I see that in some areas there's more dead skin build up, just, you know, just stop in that area and give it a couple of more strokes. You know, they can be really small you know or not or longer so don't be afraid to uh, focus on some areas a little more but definitely let your client know that it should not feel um, uncomfortable if they feel uncomfortable they need to let you know because sometimes the skin doesn't show uh, or the client doesn't say anything you know thinking that the more abrasive it is the better and they just take the pain and that's when we end up with scabs um we end up with uh, uh you know bruises so we don't want that to happen all right so we're gonna go ahead and continue and now i'm going to turn my client's face this way make sure I'm well adjusted here um, I'm going to keep checking my tips so just monitor me and see what I'm doing here how I'm holding the skin you know how I am picking my direction pull your lips in for me mm -hmm. Okay, so you want to curve it. You definitely want to follow the, the face structure, the bone structure, okay? And you want your strokes to be very, very smooth and light. What makes it smooth and light is the fact that you are pulling the skin, stretching the skin. My model skin is very um, young so she has her skin is very supple sometimes you'll be working with a client that has um, loose skin aging skin so it's okay if you take the skin and stretch it both directions okay and go from one finger to another finger that's totally fine too when you are around the eyes you definitely want to be careful because the skin is very thin there so do a couple of strokes first 
okay you're gonna do a couple of strokes and make sure that the skin is fine it's not turning red your client is fine if you want to go beyond the orbital bone just go ahead and stretch the skin so pull the skin on the bone and then do a couple of strokes but make sure you're very gentle you can actually take the small tip if you feel more comfortable take the small tip and use it the one that i said is good for around the nose and use the small tip okay so i'm going to go ahead and change the tip to yeah you see how much and i'm not even finished yet but look at how much skin we already got on the filter so this is pretty much the time for you to change that filter all right so i'm quickly going to be changing the filter now we'll take this one and dispose it oops i'm gonna put a new filter on and i'm gonna pick my tip with the small opening all right here we go takes two seconds yeah so if you see the number here is 240 so that tells you that it's very very light abrasion so at this point i'm going to close the hole and move to number 40 on this machine again the numbers can be different on different machines on this one it's 40 so what i'm going to do is make sure i'm well adjusted here and even though the nose is thick area you still want to hold it and support it and you can go up and down in the nose as long as you're not harming the skin you're fine to go up or down or to the side and move it different directions you can go slower or faster okay so i did the right side and now i'm going to be doing the left side if you're ambidextrous then you can switch it to switch the handpiece to your left side and work with your left hand and the right hand will just help so make sure that both hands are on the face supporting each other so this is how i would do the nose and then if there are any other little areas like sometimes you want to clean under the brow you can do that okay right under the eye like i said you can use a smaller if you feel again like the suction is too much then just bring the suction down okay all right and then you would do the same thing on the other hand i mean on the other side so now that i've done my full coverage uh, before I turn the machine off, I want to go ahead and just give it another evaluation um, and make sure that I may want to, uh, you know, cover some areas of concern. Like, you know, if your client has uh, rough texture or if they have, you know, fine lines that they're concerned about or pigmentation, so then what you would do at your very last pass you would take and just do take a new tip and just do those areas so i felt like my client's forehead was really rough so i'm going to go ahead and give it one more good pass around the forehead so here i'm holding the skin both ways i'm kind of doing rapid short strokes um 
just to make sure that this area is nice and smooth before I turn off my machine. Sometimes, I'm gonna give you a little trick. Sometimes, on my last pass, um, I use this technique that I call polishing. I'm gonna show it to you. But in order to do that, you have to, you must, 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 you have to promise me that you are going to turn the suction down. So I'm going to, so if I was on the 20, I'm going to turn it almost to 15, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each part and go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, okay? So what I found is that it gives me, let me see if I can do it where, there we go, to where you can see. Okay, so what I'm doing is that I'm pulling the skin both ways and I'm going back and forth. The only thing here, you have to remember that the suction has to be very low. You should still feel the suction, but it has to be very low. Okay, so slow, slowly, turn your face. Okay, slowly, you can avoid the temples because you can see where the skin is red, you don't need to polish there. But everywhere else, you know, you just spread the skin both ways and you just go one, two, three. Okay, very, very light. And that gives it, um, that gives the skin a good polish. All right, and you can do it all throughout. You see how much, yeah, my client's skin can really use some microdermabrasion because her skin keeps peeling and peeling and peeling, which is great. So let's say I'm finished with my treatment. Um, I usually like to first turn off the machine just so the client can continue relaxing and then I remove the tip and the filter for me to wash it later and then I put my handpiece somewhere on the side um, I don't want to put it right on the machine yet because I didn't disinfect it so I'm just gonna set it aside for now and clean it afterwards so after you're done with microdermabrasion um, the first thing you want to do is either run some wet sponges through the skin, okay? Because she does have a lot of that skin dust on her skin, I mean on her face. Um, so I'm just going to rinse quickly. So now that my client's skin is very polished, her pores are open, her skin is microdermabrasion. Um, now this skin is ready to absorb, okay? Now this would be the time, sometimes, you know, like I said, we can do microdermabrasion before we do extractions. So now would be the time to do extractions. If you want to just put like a warm towel on the skin, you can. Um, my preference is to do microdermabrasion after the extractions um, for many different reasons. I can cover that uh, topic separately in my other videos, but I like to do just from experience, I like to do my extractions first because when the skin is already abrased with the machine, it's hard for me to put any products on it that would soften the skin because they will burn the skin. So what I want to do is I want to prepare the skin, soften the skin, do my extractions, and then do my um to, to polish the skin. So that's just my choice. Um, you guys may do it differently and do my um before extractions. Um, that's your choice. And I think as long as we're not harming the skin, you know, both are appropriate. Both ways are appropriate. So now my skin is ready for, um, you know, absorption of 
uh, good ingredients and at this point I can either use my serums I can actually add more gadgets I can now use my ultrasonics uh, my radio frequency uh, vibration massage LED so I can use all of the all of those modalities to continue improving the health of the skin um, at this point I'm gonna go ahead and put the mask on and then after the mask I will put um, my finishing products like my serums moisturizers um, um, eye, eye products and um, SPF so this is pretty much uh, the uh, overview of microdermabrasion you guys are welcome to uh, ask questions down below and we can have a discussion and you know what share share how you like to do microdermabrasion and what you think is effective uh, so we can all learn from each other and share the information and this way we can provide a quality service because microdermabrasion to me is one of the most popular it continues to um, keep that respect in the industry as far as um, a service or a procedure and um, I, I'm happy I, I love my microdermabrasion and I use it um, in a lot of my facials a lot of my facials so uh, definitely um, don't ignore it ask questions let's learn more and I will see you guys in my future videos don't forget to put a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to my channel if this is your first time watching it. Bye guys.